Good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome to Women of the Bible Series 2021, sponsored by our very own BCF Woman Ministry. Oh, I'm so excited today. I'm like extremely excited, and uh, I've been thinking about it uh, this week that we have with us our very own, from BCF, our very own Deacon Mamie Wright, who will be joining us. She's a pillar in the congregations, longstanding member, but just a gem for our congregation that we all love and adore her. But today we're just going to be expounding on the character, Anna. And so I'm gonna turn it right over to Deacon Mamie Wright, uh, who will take us further in exploring this amazing character, Anna. Turning it over to you. Okay, um, I'm so happy to be with the, uh, Pastor Q this morning to share with you Anna in the Bible. Anna could be found shortly in Luke 2, 36 to 38. Anna, Anna was a prophetess. A prophetess is a woman who speaks for God or by divine inspiration, a woman who foretells future events. She was a wife, a worker, a worshiper, a witness, and a woman. And she, at this point, she was very old, but she had been married at a young age and her husband died. But she didn't give up on life. She went to the church, to the temple to serve God. And she served him day and night. She prayed day and night. Hmm. And Anna, she was married, yeah, as a young age, for seven years, but her husband died. Anna did not give up on life. She went to the temple praying. This was her lifestyle, her practice, living yeah. in God's presence. That all she wanted to do was serve God and wait on God. She was a faithful, faithful person. I, I wish I could be like Anna and, and, and be more humble and honest and, and, and in tune with God, but I'm trying. I pray for the people in my family every day, for especially during this time of COVID. You want to pray and keep them in, in God's presence to pray for them. So Anna was a pray, praying woman. She was honest. She was attuned to God's word. That's why she was picked to see Jesus when he came to the temple to be baptized. She and Simeon were there and recognized Jesus as the Messiah and told others, others about him. That was, her, that was her, her lot in life. She was a prophetess and she was a missionary. They said she was the first missionary in the new Testament, because she was the oldest prophetess in the Old Testament. And she, she spread the word. She spread the word about Jesus. She did a lot in the temple. I, I can imagine if she was there day and night that she was really a worker, a yeah. good worker. We have people in our church like that. They, they, they come to church and they, you can tell the workers, the one that's working, a lot of them work. There's a place in church for everybody to work. You can yes. be in ministry. You can be in deacon. You can be in the um, music ministry. You can be in the um, culinary. There's mm -hmm. some place for everybody in church. You just have to know, pray to God and tell him to let you know what your gift is. Everyone has a gift to be in church. And Anna used her gift to the max. She, I'm sure as a missionary, she counseled younger women, like the, the mothers in our church. We have mothers in our church. That Those are our Annas. Those are our Annas. They, they help the younger women in church and counsel them and, and console them and give them advice. And that's what Anna used to do in her church. So we can all strive to be like Anna. Yes, yes, amen and amen. And when you, when you talk about those that are, you know, assigned to do something, everyone has a role to play. There are things that everyone can do in their house of worship. You may not be the one behind the pulpit. 
You may not even have the title as deacon, but perhaps you can be the person that serves the, the hungry when they, you know, come on the line or you may be exactly. the one. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? There's a role and, for us. There's a role for every single one of us. And even those that are called, you know, hey, I'm the one that's supposed to be cleaning the bathroom, supposed to be mopping the floors and, and everyone has a role and we're watching right. the children. I think that's a very important um, piece to put in, at, you know, at this time, particularly when it comes to serving, because there's never been more of a time where we need more servants and more hands on deck than now. Exactly. Yes. So never, never, never think that it's beneath you to do these things because you're working unto the Lord. You're Amen. not working unto yourself. You're working unto the Lord. If you realize that, you know, you, you wouldn't have an attitude. You'd be happy to work in the church. You would be happy to do those things. I agree with you on that. When you recognize that you're that you're doing this as unto the Lord and not unto man, it right. is it is the most fulfilling role that can be had when you know that the reason why you're doing this is to please God. I mean, what else is there? You know? Right, right. And you wait on God's word. And Anna waited and waited. They say she waited for his word and she waited on him because there was a purpose he had for her in recognizing. Jesus when he came, recognizing that that was the baby. I'm sure being in the church that long, they say she must have been to many baptisms and baptized many babies. But how <laughs> did they know that this particular baby was the Messiah? Because the spirit of God was in her and he told her, the spirit told her that this was Jesus. And she was to go out and spread the word in Jerusalem about this baby. And that's what she did. She that's worked. She really worked very hard for Jesus, for God. And when you think about it, you know, the, the Bible says that she prayed and fasted, worshiped God. That was her lifestyle. So she was in tune. She was yes. in tune with the spirit of God to be able to recognize gee, that this was the Messiah. This is who exactly, she was right? yes. eating and praying for the Messiah, for the Savior to come and redeem. Imagine if she wasn't a person of prayer and a person of, of worship. He could have came and just walked right by her. She wouldn't have even known. She exactly. would not But because of her faithfulness and worship, because of her faithfulness and praying and fasting and literally uh, praying for the Savior to come. Exactly. That was a specific yes. prayer. And God blessed her. Was she 84 years old? You know, a God blessed her to see that. You know, so, you know, you're going to get in trouble, Deacon Mamie, for saying 84 years old is old. So just so you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we can back up off of that because I'm going to be 84 <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> yeah. But you know, she, she, I think she was a strong woman at her age. She was a strong woman. And she lived, they said back in those days, you lived over 100. And, and by the time Jesus came, she was much older. And she, um, when he was crucified, she was, I think she was still there and she was over a hundred years old then. So the women lived very long back then. Mm. And another <laughs> thing at being in, in St. Luke's, um, St. Luke's, they said, he's the one that elevated women much more than any other book in the Bible. You, you read about women in St. Luke's than any other book in the Bible. And wow. He, he uplifted them and, and, and made them higher, you know, this way wow. God wanted them to be. Yes. Wow. Did you hear that? Those that are listening, you need to study Luke so you can know more about these strong, powerful right. women. Thank you, Deacon Mamie, for that nugget. We didn't even know that he mm -hmm. spoke more about women than any other person in the Bible. And that's something to, to think about, you know? Yes, yes, and, yes. But Learn about a, more of these strong women of the Bible. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and you think about the honor that we have, you know, her being able uh, to see the promised one, you know, Jesus, exactly, right? Exactly, yes. The woman, you know, and there's other women in the Bible that have these special privileges like the Mary Magdalene and, and different yeah. ones. Anna, I mean, I felt like, there's such, there was such depth to her. And I'm mm. like, you, boy, I wish I, I wish I was that 
I mean, that she, they said day and night. I mean, she dedicated herself day and night. to yeah. prayer and worship. You know, that was her call. That was her call. But couldn't we do a little bit more, even on this earth, a little bit more in the area of praying and worshiping and fasting? I, I don't think we can say that we, you know, we do enough in that area. None of us can say that. Um, you know, but the thing I want to point to next is the promises. Mm -hmm. Because listen to the scripture in Luke. It says that God allowed her to see the promised one, Jesus. And I thought about the fact that this was a desire of her heart. Mm -hmm. God will give us the desire yeah, of her heart. But she waited. So let's talk about us waiting for desires, waiting for um, God to show up in our lives, to fulfill some of those desires. Some of us were waiting a long, long time, and I know there's still some desires I have that haven't been fulfilled, but there's been desires that have been fulfilled. Do you have testimonies of some desires that have been fulfilled that you had been waiting on and other desires that you may have that you know you don't have to, you don't necessarily share every little detail, but just things that are on your heart right now to share to encourage our women that are listening. We we we're we're a race of people right now who's very impatient and waiting. We don't want to wait. We want instant gratification. That's the way we are. But we 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 have to learn to listen and wait for God to fulfill our what we want in our hearts. If we wait, He will He will grant you what you want. If you wait and you pray and you pray and you fast, you watch, he will grant you the desires of your heart, but you have to do work too. You have to pray, you have to fast, you have to wait. He's not, you know, it's on God's time. It's not our time. It's on God's time when you're going to get these things. And I know I have desires that you want. You want to be elevated. You want to be more, you know, do more and be used more and he will use you he use you just wait he will use you i agree with that you know i think we are a very impatient people mm. you know I, you know we're like that fast food society you know we want it our way and we want it now it's like burger king mcdonald's in action <laughs> <laughs> we even get impatient on the fast food lines okay yes yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and, it's, and those things are ready made, right? They are like yeah. <laughs> the buffet, the buffet lines. We we get impatient with the person in front of us to hurry up. I mean, that's mm. just how we made up. But the you know they say you know patience doesn't work in us, right? It it works. It works. It builds our character if yeah. we. Oh, it too, you know? Um, and I know how it is to be anxious and like, oh God, when, when, when? It's not, you know, not now, but right now. And, and, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and yep. God, you know, you're not even ready for it right now. When mm -hmm. the time comes, you're gonna be ready for what I have for you. And, and even though sometimes thinking maybe we, we feel the promise, we know that promise that God has, has told us and shared with us, but sometimes mm. it says, wait. It's wait. like giving birth to a baby. You know how it is when you gave birth to your little one? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if yours came quickly or if you <laughs> had to had to be on the table for a while. Yeah, I had to be on the table for a while waiting with that pain, but you had to wait. You had to wait until the doctor said you're ready. Mm -hmm. And you you figured that you were ready when you had that first pain. But no, you had to go through a whole lot more before you was ready. And <laughs> before she took you in there. Yeah, that's waiting. That's what Anna did. Anna waited and she waited and she waited and she was rewarded. She was rewarded to see Christ, to mm. see baby Jesus come in there and be baptized. She was a faithful, faithful woman. And we rewarded. That's what it is. It's a reward that comes from waiting. Mm -hmm. and, and you made a very key point. I was in pain, but I still had to wait. Yes. You know, that is powerful because many of the women that are listening to us right now, 
are in pain. And God is saying, you still have to wait yes. until the doctor, until King Jesus says, okay, now it's time to deliver that baby. And it's not like just one instance of pain. It could be <laughs> a continual pain for many yes. of us, you know, before we're allowed to push. But sometimes we have those indications, right, Dick and Mamie, of wanting to push. Right, right. You know, it's like you want to push. And he says, hold up. Wait. You, they say, wait. There he says, goes that word again, wait. <laughs> and I, I, I was like, I looked at my clock. I'm like, are you crazy? I got every <laughs> indication is telling me to push. And you're telling me to wait? Every <laughs> indication is telling me now. I've endured this pain long enough. I'm ready mm. for you to now get on my timetable. You know, I am no longer wanting to endure another day of pain, another, exactly. of pain, another minute of pain. God, when are you going to deliver me from this mess? And that's <laughs> what the people of the women are thinking right now, thinking, maybe they are mm -hmm. out there saying, God, when are you going to deliver me from this mess? Yes, yes. Pain. And so, Talk to those right now. Let's talk to those women who are feeling the pain uh, because at the end of the waiting period comes your reward. Right. They, if, if they, they wait long enough, they'll see that God is going to come to them. If you, if you stay in tune, stay in prayer, then you will be in tune with God and you will see that he will do what he said he will do. You, you might wait a little while, but it's going to come. It is, it, the answer is going to come and he's going to relieve you of all the pain and he's going to do what he promised that he said he would do. He's going to do it. You just have to wait a little longer, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're saying what you just said was he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Did you hear that? What Dickie Mamie mm -hmm. just told us? He's going to do what he said he's mm -hmm. going to do. Why? Because God is not a God that can lie. No. His promises are yay and amen. Mm -hmm. So if he says he's going to do it, you consider it a done deal. You can take his word to the bank. You don't even need to see the manifestation. But what you need to be doing while you're waiting, you need to be praising God. You amen. need to be worshiping the way and Hallelujah. You need to be mm -hmm. praying. You need to be worshiping. You need to be fasting until you see the manifestation of what God has promised. Because God's promises are yea and amen. We amen. serve a God, Deacon Mamie, that cannot lie. Exactly. Exactly. That cannot lie. He cannot. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. He is yes, faithful he is. to us. Yes, he is. Thank you, yeah. Lord. Faithfulness. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. And you know, you know, you think about it. Sometimes we it's hard for us to take God at his word because maybe a, a lot of us have seen so many broken promises made by men. Yeah, yeah. So many times we've been disappointed in the arm of flesh. Mm. Flesh will always fail us. Yes, yes. I mean, we can we can depend on, you know, our family, but there's going to be a time where they too can let us down. Let's be exactly. real. Yes, yes. It doesn't matter who they are and how much we love them and how much they love us. There are, there's you, we just have frailties as human beings. Humanity has frailties and we have to know that. But God, Going back to what you said just now, Dick and Mamie, he is faithful. Yes. He will never go back on his word. Mm -hmm. Even when at times we ourselves are unfaithful. Right. He remains faithful. And Anna encompassed, we saw the very picture of that. Yes, Ruth, yes. Anna, his faithfulness through the power of prayer, fasting, worship, and waiting. So what is it we need to be doing while we're waiting, Deacon Mimi? What are some of the things we could be doing while we're waiting? Praying, praying. Mm -hmm. We must pray day and night. We must fast to give God fasting. 
-hmm. you must wait and and be of good courage be of good courage yes and you'll see that the things that you want will come they will come eventually and it, and it probably won't be that long you just think it's long but it's, it's not that long he will be there he he, he will come and help you you Always. know what when you just said that i thought of the, the say he may not come when you want him when you want him but he's right on time yeah he's exactly. an on time god you're you're saying so much right now he's an on time god mm. he's he's a faithful god mm. you know the power of waiting the power of waiting through pain mm -hmm. um, and recognizing, do, do you want to share a testimony of, of something you waited for and you saw God uh, manifest in your life? Can you just share a testimony on that? I was waiting. Well, okay, this is my apartment that I'm living in. I was waiting for this apartment, but because my son had gone away to college and I had put out a lot of money for him for college, I couldn't save any money to buy this apartment. But God told me, I didn't have any money when I got this apartment. And I was telling people, I'm gonna move up to Co-op City. And they said, well, are you gonna move? I said, I'm gonna move up there. I got moving packages to start packing. I did not even get an okay that I was gonna move here. But my sister laughed at me, oh, you're gonna move? I said, yes, I'm going to move. Before I even got the word that I had the money in the bank, to pay for the apartment, I had already started packing because I went on God's word. God knew I wanted to move up here. He knew I wanted to move out of the old neighborhood I was in. And he arranged it for me to get the loan that everybody said I wasn't going to get. And, and I got the loan and I moved here in record time, like three months maybe, when other people have to wait years to move up here. That is God working in my life. That was him working in my life. Hallelujah. Yeah. God just had you share that testimony to tell people to start packing. Start mm. packing for your dreams. Start packing. Start packaging yourself now for right. what you already have declared out of your mouth. Deacon Mamie declared it out of her mouth. I'm going to be moving. And she didn't wait for the bank to clear and say, hey, you've got the loan. She started packing. What is it that God has told you? What is it that God is promising you? What is it that God is requiring you to declare? Thus saith the Lord, declare it, proclaim it. Exactly. Speak it out of your Amen. mouth. Speak Amen. it out of your mouth. Speak it, Mandy. She spoke it out of her mouth. This is what I'm going to do. And she knew she had God with her and that with God on her side, it was impossible for her to fail, impossible. And that he was gonna fulfill his word concerning this promise. And so you need to start packing. You need to start packaging yourself. You need to start now on seeing yourself in that road that God is calling you in, in that place that God is calling you to be at, in the things that he's calling you to do. Hallelujah. You need to see that and you need to claim it and you need to latch on to it. That is Amen. so powerful, Amen. man. That is so powerful. You just got me so full right now. <laughs> With that testimony, you have got me so full because mm -hmm. that is it. You know that business that God is telling you to launch. Start preparing yourself. Stop exactly, waiting for yes. God because he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. You're saying, I'm waiting. He's waiting on you. Get your portfolio together. Get your resume together. You know, get your, um, your wardrobe together. Get your elevator pitch together. Come on, somebody. Start doing the research you need to do online to determine what are the steps you need to take yes. to launch that business. Start educating yourself. There are online courses that are free to start this world to entrepreneurship. Start packaging yourself and start doing it now. Stop waiting on someone else. God said, it's up to you. Start packing, start packaging, and start doing it now. Hallelujah. Exactly, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Deacon, can maybe we're talking to some folks here today. <laughs> that one thing just exploded in me. I mean, that is a message in itself. Start mm. packing. Packing, that's right. Mm. And you did it just from the declaration out of your mouth 
before seeing everything line up. And that's where people miss it. They wait till everything line up before they move. That's not faith. That's not faith. God will allow you to step out in the water and dare to trust him. Allow you to step out in the water until there's times where you feel like the water's so dark and you're just trusting God. And he's going to make sure that you don't sink. He's going to make sure that you make it to the other side. We just got to trust God the way Deacon Mamie just gave us that example. We got to trust him. When it feels like we can't trust ourselves, when it feels like we can't trust anyone else, we got to know that we can lean on God. Hallelujah. Deacon Mamie, I'm going to turn it back over to you for the final words for today. The final words of encouragement uh, for those that are listening, the Annas that are out there, or the Annas that are the wannabe Annas uh, that are listening to us or watching us. I'm going to allow you just to give us these final words. Okay, uh, it, it, it's the same as coming to Christ. I had a girlfriend who I used to tell all day, come on to church, come on to church and, and, and join the family. And she said, oh, no, I got to clean up my life. I have, to, I have to, some things I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing. And I said, you're not going to be able to clean up your life. I said, you mm -hmm. come, you join the church, God will clean you up. You can't do it yourself. And she did. She came. She, she joined, you know, she gave her life to Christ. She got baptized and oh. she's a different woman today. She, God cleaned her up. She could not clean herself up like that. God was the one that did it. And that's what we all have to do. Let God do the work. We pray and we fast, but God will do the work in us. He will bring out your gifts that you have. Everybody has a gift in them and God will bring it out and show you what your gift is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? We can't clean up ourselves. Only God can. Mm -hmm. Only God can fix the pain. Yeah. Only God can bring the delivery of the dreams and the purposes that he has for your life. Only mm -hmm. God can do that. And just like he did for the woman, don't wait. That's what the message was. Don't wait to think that you can clean up yourself. Go to God. In our closing moments, we want you to run to God and yes. allow him to do the work on the inside of you. And just as he did for Deacon Mamie's friend, he can do it for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Mamie, for You're sharing so wisdom, your knowledge, and and, and I think I, you're going to have to peel me off the ceiling tonight. Uh, but thank you for your wisdom and your knowledge and, and for just sparking such uh, uh, an enthusiasm to do more and for the kingdom of God and to believe God for more. That this Amen. is not Amen. our final. And just as he showed Anna Jesus, he's going he's gonna to fulfill her, her desires. He'll do the same for us. So thank you again for sharing. Thank you, for audience, for listening. And remember, this is every Tuesday night at 7.30. So I'm looking forward to seeing you next week as we continue to explore Women of the Bible 2021. God bless. <laughs>